Welcome back to Dirty Medicine's Dirty Ethics series. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the EMTALA laws, or the EMTALA Act. Now, you've probably heard about EMTALA before. When I say EMTALA, I'm referring to the abbreviation E-M-T-A-L-A. And what that stands for is the Emergency Medical Treatment and Active Labor Act, better known on question banks and on exams as EMTALA. Now, EMTALA is a very important act that was brought into law uh, sometime in the 1980s. And this was a response to lots of hospitals turning patients away or refusing to see them because of things like their ability to pay and other factors that influenced, that were influenced, you know, mostly by financial motivation, by money. So this act was brought into place to reduce what's referred to as patient dumping. So that's really where MTALA got its start. Now, how is this relevant for you? Well, unfortunately, well, maybe fortunately, you're going to be a physician, which means you need to understand these laws because they're going to apply to your daily clinical practice, especially if you work in the emergency department. But no matter where you work, you're going to have to understand these laws quite well. So in today's video, what we're going to do is begin by talking about the EMTALA Act and hit some of the high yield bullet points to help you remember really important components of this act. And what I'll do is I'll end with a practice question that could show you some type of annoying question that you might get on test day, because after all, all of the ethics questions are pretty challenging. It's not the principles themselves that are challenging, but it's, it's definitely the way that the question is written that's going to try to throw you off. So let's get started by just doing a brief overview of EMTALA. And this video is not going to be long at all, because we're just talking about one act. So EMTALA requires that hospitals that have an emergency department provide medical screening exams to basically any patient that presents with a possible emergency, you know, emergent, emergent medical condition. Now, the hospitals that are eligible are those that accept Medicare. So in the United States, probably like high 90%, almost all hospitals are accepting Medicare. There are a few that have made the news because they don't accept Medicare, and those are not uh, included in EMTALA, but basically any hospital that accepts Medicare from the Centers of Medicaid and Medicare Services has to abide by this EMTALA law. Now, this does not take into account things like patients' legal status, their citizenship, their ability to pay, or any demographic factor at all. So it doesn't matter what kind of patient walks through that door. If they're a human being and the hospital accepts Medicare, EMTALA stipulates that they have to be given a medical screening exam regardless of what their complaint is. So it technically doesn't even matter if it's a true emergency medical condition or not. If they walk in the emergency room and tell you that their pinky toe hurts, you have to see them. It doesn't matter why, it doesn't matter how, you have to see them, it's law. So that's what MTELA stipulates. Now, the last bullet point here, the emergency departments can't transfer or discharge patients without the informed consent of the patient or the caregiver. Very, very important. Other things that EMTALA stipulates is that if hospitals don't have the means to treat an emergency medical condition, they are legally required to transfer the patient to the nearest emergency room or nearest hospital that can adequately treat that condition. So very, very important. So, so a good example of that would be if somebody comes in with chest pain, they get an EKG and they're found to have a myocardial infarction, but there's no cath lab at that hospital then legally what that hospital should do is transfer that patient to the nearest facility that has a cath lab so that this can be taken care of. So those are the high yield overview points about EMTALA. That's really what you should keep in mind when it comes to exams. I think what we should do now is do a practice question, give you an annoying scenario that you might see and help you reason through it. Point out another thing about EMTALA that's pretty, pretty high yield. So here's our practice question. A patient presents to his primary care physician for a routine office visit. He did not make an appointment, so he shows up unannounced. So just literally shows up at the doctor's office. He was last seen three weeks ago by the same doctor. He complains of chest discomfort, which started earlier that morning while he was eating breakfast. Which of the following is true regarding this situation, according to Mtala? A. The patient must be medically assessed by the physician. B. The patient does not have to be medically assessed by the physician. C, the physician must transfer the patient to the nearest emergency department. D, the physician has no doctor-patient relationship established and therefore does not need to see the patient. E, the physician does not accept Medicare and therefore does not need to see the patient. Okay, so 
Think about this for a second. If you need more time, pause the video, but let's point out the right answer and then go through this. So the correct answer here is B. The patient does not have to be medically assessed by the physician. Now, of course, the physician should medically assess this patient, right? It's an ongoing patient that he has been seeing, uh, evidenced by the fact that I told you in the question that he was last seen three weeks ago. So this is a patient that belongs to this physician. So there is a, a doctor-patient relationship, and, you know, ethically, morally, this physician should do the patient a favor and perform a medical screening exam. But the reason that this that I put this question here, and the reason that this is really high yield as it relates to Mtala, is Mtala only applies to emergency departments. It does not apply to outpatient clinics. So this is a physician's private office. Mtala does not apply here. So a patient that walks in the door absolutely does not have to be seen. There's no legal standing to suggest that that patient needs to be seen. Now, of course, I'm gonna say it again, the doctor should perform a medical screening exam, right? That would be the ethical thing to do. But legally, according to Mtala, he does not have to. He does not have to do choice C, which is transfer the patient to the nearest emergency room. Although if the patient was looking like he was in distress and the physician was concerned acutely, then that's definitely what he should do. But he doesn't have to do it according to Mtala. The physician does not accept Medicare and therefore doesn't need to see the patient. Well, regardless of whether or not the physician in this scenario is accepting Medicare, this isn't the right answer because the patient doesn't have to be seen, period, because it's an outpatient clinic. So E is not the most correct answer. And then A is obviously not the correct answer because the patient does not have to be medically assessed in this situation, according to Mtala. So I put this here to kind of be nitpicky and annoying to point out that you don't have to see patients if you're in an outpatient clinic right? Mtala only applies to emergency departments. Here's the other high yield information that you absolutely need to know about Mtala. These do pop up on exams, guys, especially step two, level two, and beyond. It can happen on step one. It can happen on level one. But for, for the second step of your boards and beyond, definitely know everything about Mtala.